Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to learn a little bit about Guyana. Um, today we have Nicola joining us all the way from Georgetown in Guyana. Um, she works for the Guyana Tourism Authority and we, Emerging Destinations, are the North America Sales and Marketing Managers for the Guyana Tourism Authority. So we're your contacts here in the States. Um, before I hand everything over to Nicola, I just want to give you a few housekeeping notes. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar, so type those through on the GoToWebinar control panel so that Nicola can get to those at the end of the presentation. Also, we will be recording and sending a playback of the webinar, so if you have to step out for a uh, lunch or a call or anything, please feel free to do so. That's no problem. Um, but yes, please ask questions, type those through. Nicola is going to be taking us through um, just kind of a Guyana 101 and um, everything there is to know about Guyana. So without further ado, I'm going to let Nicola take over. Thanks, Jesse. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm pleased you guys made time today and are welcome and ready to learn more about Guyana. Um, it's a rare kind of place, one where you can find nature's feeding hearts. As Jesse mentioned, my name is Nicola Balaram, and I am the Senior Officer of Marketing at the Guyana Tourism Authority. You can get me at 592-219-0091 on my mobile or via email at nicola at guyanatourism.com. So the first part of the presentation, we're going to just go through some basic facts on where Guyana is, how you can get there, and then we'll dive a little bit more detailed into what a potential trip to Guyana can look like. Guyana is found on the continent of South America. It is the only country where English is the native language. It is about the size of Idaho and located just below the Caribbean Sea and above Brazil. How to get to Guyana. Guyana has direct fl flights from Miami with American Airlines, Caribbean Airways, and Suriname Airways. They will be serving direct flights from New York with American Airlines in December 2019, but currently you can hop on a Caribbean Airlines flight and fly from New York or Toronto directly to Guyana. Liat Airways also connects a lot of our regional um, Caribbean islands, such as Barbados and Trinidad, to Guyana. Copa Airlines flies directly from Panama with its onward connections at many other destinations and 14 hubs in the West. And with all these connecting flights, it is easy to get connections with Virgin Atlantic, British Airways, and a host of other airlines. As mentioned, the biggest pull for the North American market is that American Airlines has direct flights to Miami. You can leave Miami at 6 p.m. and arrive at 11 4 to p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And the returning flight leaves Georgetown at 1 15 a.m. and arrives in Miami at 4 55 a.m. Starting on December 18th, 2019, there will now be direct flights from JFK, New York to Guyana. 90% of the population of Guyana lives on the coastline, leaving the rest of the country untouched and ripe and ready for exploration. Guyana is found in the Guyana Shield, which is actually made up of a part of Venezuela, some of Brazil, a part of Suriname, and French Guyana. Commonly known as the Three Guyanas, Guyana was actually once British Guyana, Suriname is referred to as Dutch Guyana, and French Guyana is still French Guyana. This is one of the four pristine tropical rainforests left, left in the world and covers an area of 1.2 square miles. So what is the Guyana Tourism product? Our product can best be defined in five main pillars. Nature and wildlife, active exploration, birding, culture and heritage, and conservation and safe travel. Throughout any of your trip in Guyana, you will be able to touch on at least two of these pillars, if not all five. Guyana's landscape is divided into three main tourism geograph geographies. There is coastland, rainforest, and our golden savannas. The Amazonia rainforest has immense waterfalls, vast open spaces, 
um, in addition to savannas and mountains and rivers that you will see along your journey in this country. Extraordinary biodiversity consisting of jaguars, giant anteaters, monkeys, snakes, and arapaima, which is the largest scale freshwater fish in the world, will greet you on your journey here. Guyana is also known as a bird watcher's paradise because of our number of bird species. We have over 910 different species with some of the star birds like the harpy eagle, sun parakeets, and cock of the rock. On the map within the presentation, in the highlighted green, you can see some of the key birding areas in the end. To get around Guyana um, from the main capital city of Georgetown to some of the tourism circuits, you usually go by either flight or road. There is one single road that connects Georgetown all the way down to Brazil. All the way down to Brazil. Guyana is made up of six different ethnic groups um, and some of the ones you will most commonly find on your travels and journey here are ones of African influences, East Indian influences and indigenous and the indigenous peoples of Guyana. Besides these, you will find those from the Chinese influences, Portuguese and Europeans as well. You're probably wondering what can you do in Guyana? So some of our main activities are horseback riding in the South Rupununi ranches, fishing in the rivers and oceans, visiting Dutch ruins, including Fort Island, Fort Zelanda, Fort Kaik overall, industrial tourism in our rice and sugar estates. And Ghana is also a great place to take those amazing landscape and wildlife shots. You can also do wildlife spotting, birding, um, do a market tour in the cities and get a to learn a little bit more of local life. So on this part of the presentation, I'm gonna carry you through what an itinerary will be like when you start in Georgetown. From Georgetown, you're gonna fly down um, to all these, all the little highlighted dots at the bottom of the presentation is from our Rupununi circuit, our North and South Rupununi circuit. And one of the main highlights of this area is our community led and owned tourism product. So when you get to Guyana, you start your journey off in Georgetown. It's one of the most vibrant cities in Guyana and has an array of colors from our markets, our buildings, um, the Dutch, the heritage spots and, and cultural spots within the country. Here you can do a market tour. You can have an in-home dining experience with Backyard Cafe. You can visit the St. George's Cathedral, which is reputedly the tallest wooden church in the world. From Georgetown, you go to the Eugene F. Karaya International Airport and take a quick trip, which is about an hour, to the Irokrama River Lodge. The airstrip from the Irokrama River Lodge is called Fairview Airstrip and it's located just a 10 to 15 minute boat ride from the lodge. Irokrama River Lodge is actually run by the Irokrama Organization and is one of the lodges that focuses a lot on conservation and safe travel. Here you will be able to see some uh, start your wildlife journey by looking at some of our amazing wildlife, such as a spider monkey or golden frog. And you can take a short trip to climb the Turtle Mountain located not that far from the lodge of itself. From Irokrama, you can take a one hour uh, journey by road to Atta Lodge. Atta in a traditional indigenous dialect actually means hammock as the, as the lodge started as a resting place for travelers traveling around the area. Atta Lodge is mostly famous for its Ayurkrama canopy walkway. Don't be confused by the name, the actual rainforest of itself is termed Ayurkrama. The Ayurkrama canopy walkway is the state of air construction. It's found 500 feet it's 500 feet in length and found 100 feet above the ground. You can enter it from a staircase at ground level, which makes it suitable for all levels of fitness. There are three main um, ports or standing points where you can stop to do bird watching, wildlife spotting, and take those awesome pictures that you need for Instagram, Facebook, and for your clients. 
From Atta Lodge, you travel another hour by road and you meet to Sarama Eco Lodge. Sarama was actually the first indigenous village in Guyana to start with community led and owned tourism. One of the most famous activities you can do around this area surrounds the Bora Bora River, which is known for fishing, birding, wildlife spotting. In the evenings, the members of the village and the communities also do a cultural presentation for their guests. Now, veering off from Sarama, Rewa Eco Lodge is not as closely as the other three. To get to Rewa, you need to take a two hour boat ride from Sarama Eco Lodge. Rewa is located more along the Rewa and Rupununi River. It is known a lot for its bird watching and wildlife spotting, but it's very famous for its sports fishing and catch and release fishing in that area. This is where you can see the Arakaima the most in Guyana. From Rewa Eco Lodge, you travel another hour by boat and then another hour by road and you meet to Karanambu Lodge. Karanamu is the famous place for wildlife conservationist Diane McTurk, who started conservation projects with giant river otters. The area is now popularly uh, known for its population of giant river otters, giant ant eaters, as well as its water lily pond. Many people from all of these villages still work at that lodge, and they're more than welcoming and more than happy to share their history and their story with travelers. From Karanambu Lodge, you travel by road to Cayman House. Cayman House started as a research facility back in the 1990s, sorry, where travelers and researchers came to actually do a Cayman tagging exercise. So in the nights, they will go out on their small boats and they will look for Caymans within the waters. They will bring them up to the river banks, mark them, measure them, and keep tabs on the population that is growing and how the actual species is growing as well. The most popular species of caiman found around this area is the black caiman. Many travelers can still come and experience that during their stay at Cayman House when they take the Creatures of the Night tour and take part in the caiman tagging event. Cayman House also started a turtle conservation project about three years ago, where every year before the turtle hatches, they keep and they nurse the turtles to about a couple of months before they're able to survive by themselves in the wild. This lodge has more of a treehouse vibe as compared to the others. Now, Cayman House will be your last stop in the North Rupinui Circuit. And from Cayman House, you can take a three hour drive to Dadanawa Ranch, where you're now entering into the South Rupinui of Guyana. The major difference between the North and the South Rupununi is that the North Rupununi is known more for its rainforest feel and vibe. And the South Rupununi is known more for the ranching field and infrastructure. They are also owned, by, owned and led by communities, indigenous communities of Guyana. But that is the main difference between the two. At Dadanawa Ranch, you can enjoy horseback riding, do cattle rearing, and also see a significant amount of wildlife in this area as well. From that an hour ranch, which will be your last stop in the Rupununi, you will then take an hour and a half boat uh, ride by road to Latham. Latham is actually the hub in this region. And you can now fly to the coastman to enjoy some of the privately owned eco lodges and resorts found on the coastland area. The first one we're gonna visit in this presentation is Arrow Point Nature Resort. When you get back to Georgetown, you take a 45 minute travel by road and then a 20 minute boat ride to Arrow Point Nature Resort along the Demara River. Arrow Point is known for its relaxing and fun environment, kayaking, trail biking, nature trail walks, and they also do a lot of team building retreats for locals in this area as well. This is the only nature resort that's actually found on the Demara River, which is the shortest river in Guyana. But the Escobar River is the bigger circuit for nature resorts 
in Guyana on the coastland. One of the highlighted resorts in this area is the Baganara Island Resort. Baganara Island Resort is found on nothing else than Baganara. From Georgetown, you take an hour travel by road and then another hour on boat to the resort. It has 11 superior rooms within suites, two deluxe rooms within suites, and standard rooms for shared bedrooms. It also has a conference facility for team building and for a lot of local businesses that use this on when they would like to do team retreats or on the weekends. It's known for its kayaking, swimming, and nature hikes. It is also the closest resort to Bartica, which is another town in Guyana, and very similar to Georgetown. No trip to Guyana is ever complete with a trip to Kaitor Falls. Baganara Island Resort also has an airstrip where you can leave that resort and fly directly to Kaitor Falls to experience the Kaitor Falls tour, which is a two hour tour. From here, you will go to three different buoying points, each getting you closer and closer to the falls. And at the final one, you get the best view of the world's most powerful and single drop waterfall in the world at 253 meters tall, which is currently five times taller than Niagara. After Kaitor Falls, you're gonna fly back to Georgetown where you can extend your trip and stay another night in Georgetown, or you can fly back home. Some people do the three Guyana store and go to Suriname after, and many travelers also tie in Guyana with multi-destination packages to Barbados, Trinidad, or Antigua because of our close connection to those areas. But nothing is more enticing to Guyana than the mouth-watering dishes you will find on your trip to Guyana. Some of the highlighted dishes you're gonna see are chicken curry, which is Indian inspired, a seafood burger and fries, plants and chips as a local staple snack, salt fish and bake, pepper pot, and roast pork. Pepper pot is actually one of the highlighted dishes of our indigenous peoples of Guyana. And it's made from a meat that is stewed in kazrip, which is made from cassava and used and lasted for a lot of days in that area of the country. It's also very popular in Georgetown as a Christmas dish. In Guyana, we have a total room stock currently of 30, of 3,244. As you can see over the years, numbers have been increasing. Um, and in 2019, we're expected to see more. Guyana is typically a warm and tropical country throughout the year, but we do have two seasons, our wet, rainy, or like we would like to call it our green season, and our dry season that has a significant less amount of rainfall. On the coastland, the wet or rainy season is usually December to January or May to June, and the dry season is February to April or November to July. In the rainforest and savannas, um, in the savannas, the wet season is May to September, and the dry season is October to April. In the rainforest, um, the same applies, but you do have some rainfall throughout the year because it is the rainforest. The best time or our highlighted seasons to travel to Guyana is usually October, late September, early October into April. Our main ports of entries are the Chetty Jagan International Airport, the UGF Cry International Airport, Latham through Brazil, and Molson Creek, which is our connection with Suriname. As you can see in the data presented here, these is comparing our visitor arrivals from 2017 to 2018, and we saw a 15.9% increase in those numbers. Uh, over the years, we've seen a significant increase in the amount of travelers coming to Guyana in the eight year period from our source markets and from the 12 different months of the year. Guyana is in the same time zone as the US and Canada, which also minimizes the amount of jet lag you will be receiving or your clients will be receiving, no matter which destination you fly from and what time of the year you travel. Transportation in Guyana can be divided into three main categories, by road, by river, or by air. In the explanation of the itinerary you saw earlier, most of your travels will be 
into the main areas by air, then followed by road and by river to get between different lodges and different activities. By air, we usually do have uh, 18, 13, 9, and 5 seater planes, depending on the location you would like to travel to and the size of your group. Jet boats frequent the Escobar River and the Demerara River, while smaller paddle boats and smaller jet boats are what are used to get between the lodges in the Rupinami. For road, most of the transport in the Rupununi and Rainforest region is 4x4 four four jeeps and trucks. In Georgetown and some of the major towns, it is the everyday car um, that will be able to make those transports available. For new operators and airlines from the Ghana Tourism Authority and Emerging Destinations, you will be provided with key information Assist with coordinating travel-related events, work with joint advertising, support of familiarization trips, the reception at the airport, help to negotiate hotel rates, help to negotiate with the Ghana private sector. And as an added benefit, and I know many of you may be wondering, we do have Wi-Fi at the lodges and hotels in Georgetown and on Escobar River Coast. However, in the interior, it is a bit limited. As such, uh, most of it will be towards the evenings and it will be emails um, to some extent and WhatsApp. But Gan is a place that when you get into those parts of the world and those, that parts of the country, you might even forget that you have a phone. So it is quite an experience. For more information, you can visit our website at ganatourism.com or the website of the Tourism and Hospitality Association, which is the private se sector sister agency to the GTA at exploregana.org. For official statistics of Guyana, you can visit statisticsgana.gov.gy. For investment opportunities into Guyana, you can visit goinvest.gov.gy. And the official website of the Chagadi Dragon International Airport, which is the main port of entry, is CG. CJ, sorry, airports-gy.com. I'll leave this over to Jesse now for any questions that came in during the webinar. Jesse, over to you. Thanks, Nicola. We do have a few questions and we'll just keep the webinar open for just a few more minutes if you guys wanna type anything through. Um, the never ending question regarding Wi-Fi, Nicola. Yes, so Wi-Fi is available in all hotels and in Georgetown and most restaurants as well. On the Esquibo Coast, Wi-Fi is available in the lodges that you stay at and the ones highlighted in this presentation, such as Arrow Point and Baganara Island Resorts. When you get further into the country, such as the North Rupununi and the South Rupununi, there is very limited bandwidth at each of the lodge. As such, in some of the lodges, you will have to either pay for that Wi-Fi service and it will only allow you to use it for WhatsApp messages, text messages, and text-based emails. Got it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Cool. Most uh, lodges. Go ahead. Uh, uh, most lodges. Some of the lodges also do have a free period, which is between twelve and the night, about three in the morning, where you can use that for pretty much anything you would like. Perfect. Um, this is a good question. What would you recommend for the average time needed for um, just a one of the circuits, just a, an average time needed for um, an itinerary? So if you're just to do one circuit, if you're going to do the North of Nuni circuit, I would suggest two weeks um, because there are a lot more different types of properties you can cover in that area. If you're doing the South Rupununi circuit, I would also recommend about two weeks. But if you are doing the Estuquibo circuit, that uh, circuit is a lot more smaller in terms of the properties and the time it takes to get between the properties. So one week should be sufficient if you're just speaking about the circuit of itself. But if you would like to add on different things, such as going to Kaishore Falls or going to Georgetown or traveling to other parts of the country, but having the Escobar circuit as your main focus, two weeks should be fine for that. And for the other two circuits, the Rupununi circuits, uh, about two to three weeks would be able to capture everything you need in that one trip. Perfect. 
Um, last question that came through regarding um, electricity. That was a good question. At all, at all yeah. the lodges, um, especially when you're out in the out in the um, interior. Yes. So when on the coastland in Georgetown, electricity is fine 24 seven. Um, when you go to the Escobar River circuit, you will have electricity there as well. Um, some of it is solar based and others will be the regular electricity that is powered through a power company. Um, for the lodging in more of the interior of the country, such as the North and South of Nuni circuits, the majority of their electricity is solar power based, but it does extend that you will be able to have electricity throughout the night as well. But we do encourage that you charge all your devices and as soon as you get back to the lodge and for cameras, have a backup battery just in case. Of course. <laughs> All right, well, those were the questions that came in. Um, everyone, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be sure to get you a webinar playback in case you had to, um, in case you came in early. And we'd love for you to share this webinar with your colleagues. Um, if you're wondering about these circuits that we're talking about, we just had a um, webinar series where we went through the popular tourism circuits of Guyana. So I'll include that in the follow-up. Um, so you can refer back to that. But um, Nicola, thanks so much for your time today. And we hope to see you all for our um, upcoming webinar in August. And um, I will also send you a link to register for that. So um, everyone have a great rest of your week. Thanks, Justine. Thank you, everyone.